Good evening and welcome back to By Any Greens Necessary. I'm your host, Melvin Thompson. I'm the executive director of the Andaleo Institute. We are the nonprofit arm of Trinity United Church of Christ, located at 400 West 95th Street in the beautiful Washington Heights community. Thank you for joining us again for another fortifying uh, show with uh, By Any Greens Necessary. We're, we're supporting our farmer's market at Trinity at 95th and Normal. Uh, I can show you the flyer there. I didn't. I think I didn't show it to you last last week, but I wanted to make sure everyone got a chance to see this. We are supported um, by the USDA uh, with a with a small grant to support our farmers market, which has been very robust this year. Uh, we are open uh, from July 8th through September 30th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday morning, uh, rain or shine. And uh, we invite you to come out and just enjoy, uh, you know, just sharing uh, good food, good times, exercise. We're doing a number of different things at the market, so you never know. We had a, um, I think we had a, a, a storytelling session uh, last week, and it was really uh, insightful because we often don't get to tell our own stories, and so uh, we really really had a captive audience last week around that and the weather again as it is every weekend it's wonderful and beautiful and I mean just perfect for a, a farmers market I want to talk to you a little bit today uh, some things have really emanated over the last couple of weeks um, at our farmers market um, of course we have the black farmers from Pembroke Illinois who are always there and sell out and again I have to tell everyone get there early. Um, if you are a fan of Mr. Barker's uh, soup, then you've got to be there before 10 o'clock. There's no, there's no doubt about it. you got to be there um, because I tried to get some, and he told me that the only soup he had left was reserved for the pastor, and I couldn't talk him out of it. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. But anyway, uh, get there early because the, the, the market is get, gathering uh, momentum, and we're really excited about about that and it's a good problem to have um, to sell out and, and see farmers doing well as well as african-american vendors that have grown uh, we've got folks selling jewelry we have folks selling plant life and uh, new ways to grow plants and um, just just all kinds of different things cookies healthy cookies that is uh, and it's just wonderful uh, things that they otherwise would not have the venue or platform to uh, to sell their wares and of course uh, we're always um, cognizant of uh, just circulating that dollar uh, far longer in our community because we know on average I think it's just six or seven hours which is ridiculous and so um, as my guests will, will attest we don't need anything new coming in our community what we need to do is strengthen what's already there and so we've, we've done that um, in, 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 in wonderful ways through cooperative e economics um, at the farmers market and today I want to just talk a little bit um, because of um, the guests that we've had over the last couple of uh, weeks. Uh, we had the young um, farmer, the young brother, um, 30 years old, Donnie Moore, and then we had Chef Marie last week who, who does the wonderful cooking um, demonstrations at the market. You know, I, I wanted to uh, kind of circle around um, black entrepreneurship. Um, it is uh, becoming more and more evident in this economy. I don't know if you're paying a whole lot of attention to what's going on nationally, um, but the healthcare crisis is more than a notion. And all of that, you know, if you keep one eye on it, uh, all it means is everything is going up. Um, the Tribune did a story uh, a couple of weeks ago about what it actually costs in the first half hour for a gunshot victim. I think it's like $27,000. It's, it's ridiculous, and it's costing all of us. Um, we support Medicare and Medicaid, and hospitals are only paying 30% of those costs, and they're just exorbitant. And so um, why is that important? Because wherever you're working now, if you're working for someone else or you're working for yourself, you're going to be facing in in the coming you know years or months or actually in the coming days uh, some exorbitant rising consistently high health costs and so you're probably going to need another stream of income to just keep up and, and maintain yourselves and your families um, and it's just a reality and I think entrepreneurship is just 
not something that, oh, I'm going to, you know, try and do something. I think it's becoming more of our everyday lives. And you, you're seeing young people um, now take the plunge. And the brother next to me um, is doing that um, big time and has done it. And, you know, we were talking in the, in the green room about, you know, you know, hitting, hitting, um, you know, getting the nerve after you've been brought up um, to work every day and, and just getting the, the gumption to, to change directions and say, you know what, I'm going to create my own path. So without further ado, um, I want to introduce you to my brother, Damon Smith. How you doing, brother? Doing well. Doing well. And, and, and this brother is a, a exemplary uh, of what I'm, what I'm talking about in terms of changing direction, making your mind up, and, and, and being a little scared to do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's all encompassing. So, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, you know what you used to do uh, in your other life and, and how you kind of migrated to uh, just working for yourself and creating your own destiny. I worked for the Department of Transportation as a construction inspector for six years. Mm -hmm. I went to Tuskegee University in oh, Tuskegee, awesome. Alabama that's awesome. uh, for undergrad where I studied construction science and management uh, to graduate and come home to the Illinois Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an incredible experience. My responsibility was to make sure that the project was being done right. It stayed on budget. I handled small-scale issues that didn't require a structural engineer uh, to make a decision and move the project forward. A lot of experience was gained from that, but the mindset uh, shift occurred, and I was forced to make myself leave. Uh, it was the best decision that I've made in life and it was a true testament of who I am as a man and it's no looking back now and I'm really really truly excited to be here one and to be an entrepreneur number two and to inspire and encourage people to believe in themselves and take that leap of faith with a plan and that's key and that's key because um, we were talking in the green room about you know setting up business plans and and projections and and all of those things. Can you talk about a, a little bit about you know how you did, did you have to do that on your own? Um, did you follow a formula or did you just say you know what I'm um, you know Damon I need to you know I need to set up something right. for my life. Right. So both of my parents were entrepreneurs and. Uh, my father had some old <coughs> materials in the basement of a building that I manage and my family owns. And I went through it and I saw his business plan from like 40 years ago. And that was encouraging. It was, of course, 40 dated. years ago. Uh, the structure was different, but the key components were still the same. Mm -hmm. uh, having in a marketing plan, a go to market strategy. Uh, just operations plan, and then having a team to execute it, mm -hmm. vision, projections, uh, they were all there. And so that was where I started. That wasn't enough for me. Uh, my goal was to open a cafe, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, I will be continue, continuing to work on that, but I needed a cafe plan. And so I uh, went to a website, found a very thorough plan that I was willing to pay $150 for. Sure. And it gave me all of the materials that I needed and a blank canvas to really grow uh, and put my own content in there and bring my vision to life on paper. So right off the bat, you come from an entrepreneurial family. Um, yeah. That is obviously uh, an impact that had incredible impact on your life to, 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 to see that you can do for self. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, and actually make it. And, you know, I didn't come from, from mm -hmm. that background. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking earlier that it's quite difficult um, to leave something, particularly when the generation before you, uh, that, wasn't the, that right. wasn't the culture, right? right. So, you know, how, how, do you, how do you, you know, beyond yeah, your, yeah, yeah how, do you, uh, man how does that manifest itself um, as you as you go forward in, into the kind of unknown? Well, it's not for everybody. Everybody can do it, but it's not for everybody, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think it's about believing in yourself. 
uh, first and foremost, having faith in whoever you believe in, uh, understanding that your words are real. And I want to talk a little bit more about that because I think okay. that's the most important thing. Just having a mindset and everything that you believe, speaking it into life, and then Absolutely. executing it, having the discipline to do it. Uh, that's been the hardest for me. Uh, I work on it every day, improving my discipline, because the fact of the matter is that everything is still the same. I'm growing my business, so it's still not where I plan to see it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. nobody else is going to do it except for me. <laughs> That's right. That That's job right. will still work <laughs> yes. without me, and mm -hmm. so that was the most impactful thing, and it really allows you to say, hey, I can create whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And you use your creative freedom to just do it. Now, uh, I think you were alluding to what gave me the gumption to leave the state to do it. Mm -hmm. And it was just being uh, at that threshold where I had to make a decision to continuously move forward in life. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think there's a level of complacency with people who <laughs> have been on jobs for longer than 10 years. Yes, I, I can't do the same thing for longer than 10 years because I didn't come into this life or go to college saying, hey, my dream job is to work for IDOT. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of that, I believe in staying true to myself. You only have one life to live. And so uh, being careful to plan that out, I wasn't doing a lot of, hey, I'm going to leave IDOT and you know go out and do this and do that. It's not about that. It's about mm -hmm. believing in yourself and wanting something better for your family, wanting something better for yourself. Sure. And what I was going to say about coming from that bloodline of entrepreneurship, I think that was very, very big. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We have a caller. Caller, go ahead with your question or your comment. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm very intrigued about the gen you and the gentleman. <laughs> You're both successful. You both didn't come up the same way, but you are successful. And the thing is that you're going to see uh, uh, success shouldn't be rare. Everybody, or uh, 90% of people, should be successful. But you know what? We have people here that we vote in office that don't care. That's why you have five, six, seven hundred people getting killed a year. They don't care. Mm -hmm. They're safe in their homes with their guards. But uh, the, the question I wanted to ask is this. You know, hopefully, Hopefully, you guys will be on TV again, and this way I can hear more about the uh, success about you, too. The way you got your success, and the way the gentleman next to you got his, his cause this is very, very intriguing, and people should listen to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for the call. We really appreciate it, and uh, we receive it. Um, that, that's, just, that's just wonderful to hear when... You, you can hear two different paths because there is no one path to success, I believe. And, yeah. and, and again, it's the speaking it into existence. And I think you want to finish I think your there point. Is, uh, before I do that, I think there is a path to success because uh, nobody just wakes up successful. Mm -hmm. uh, success starts <clears throat> with a mindset and wanting more mm -hmm. and being disciplined enough to execute on what you want mm -hmm. and seeing that through. And I still haven't achieve that level of success that you're speaking mm -hmm. into my life. And mm -hmm. I'll receive that yep. mm -hmm. because I am successful because, again, it's about what you believe you can accomplish and where your mind is and how disciplined you are sure. to achieve that. Uh, where I was going before the caller uh, called in was that both my mother and father were both entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. are both entrepreneurs. Uh, my father recently retired. I woke up every day and they were already up. <laughs> uh, they were already mm -hmm. on their way out the house. My mom was a home child care provider mm -hmm. with eight kids in the house, who, of which who I had the pleasure of growing up with and mm -hmm. getting to know. And so mm -hmm. I was never alone. Mm -hmm. I'm an only child, and so that mattered a lot. But seeing my dad, the way he dressed, uh, got up with a clean briefcase, mm -hmm. clean shoes, mm -hmm. Went to a cleaners, black owned tailor uh, cleaners, you know, and always suited. And more is caught than taught. Uh, my father in law says that 
more times than I can count. And I truly believe that mm -hmm. because it's not always about what you say, it's what you see. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think Absolutely. that had a big impact on me. But I've been able to impact people because they see me doing my thing and working mm -hmm. diligently at mm -hmm. it and staying positive about it and speaking all positivity into what I'm doing. And it inspires them. I'm talking about high schoolers. Absolutely. So what Absolutely. we're talking about has a long-term effect on our community. Being entrepreneurs, what we see is real. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when I wake up and go outside, my neighbors are coming out who have kids. And those kids are looking at me. Absolutely. They're looking at Absolutely. me pick up the trash. They're looking yes. at me yes. cut watching the grass. Mm -hmm. They're watching. And mm -hmm. more is caught than taught. Mm -hmm. And so just being disciplined in those efforts, it, it'll take you a long way in having vision uh, for yourself greater than what you set, uh, what anybody else sets the limit mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. And that's, and that's I, 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 am, I didn't realize how much of a control freak <laughs> I actually was. And I just never saw myself uh, at the end of the day necessarily retiring to anything. Um, I, I it just I just kept saying okay what's next in my yeah. in my life and this can't be it because um, growing up I really wasn't sure and I know there are a lot of young people who aren't sure of what they're looking yeah. for uh, and and what that thing is what what is that thing mm -hmm. that that I have that's different from everybody else and sometimes that doesn't get cultivated um, they don't see that person in their community yeah. that's getting up uh, cleaning up or uh, going to work consistently right. every day and so it's, it's, it's really tough and, and we have a, an education component at Andaleo and that's one of the things that I harp on all the time that there's no um, cookie cutter uh, formula to to what you're going to do um, but what I'd love to see is us nurture the talent uh, whatever that might be in that person because it's unique it's a unique talent that we need to nurture and bring out Absolutely. so so yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a live call in show. If you have any comments or questions, you can reach us at 312 738 1060. That's 312 738 1060. Talk about um, hitting a wall. Have you ever, have you ever uh, run into like a dead end where um, the path that you set out for yourself and you're all you know, excited and things are going well and you got things in the pipeline and you can see this thing unfolding and then all of a sudden, change of direction. This is not going to work the way I envisioned it to work. I'm there now. Wow. I'm there wow. now. Wow. But I think maintaining your chi and staying focused on what you believe in and having a plan again uh, and a backup plan and a backup to your backup <laughs> plan, I think that is important. And what I do is I have a big notebook uh, that I keep all of my great ideas in. And they don't have to all happen overnight. But what that it does is organizes my thoughts mm -hmm. and allows me to look through them when I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look through them and I dream about making that a reality. And so you sort of figure out <laughs> what that next move is by taking time to step back mm -hmm. and just enjoying being alive because at the end of the day, you got <laughs> one life to live <laughs> and, and then tapping into your gifts and then utilizing your resources. Uh, there's a book, I think of the name of it, but it talks about how little we utilize or capitalize on our network to execute whatever our plans are mm -hmm. and Who's that team? Mm -hmm. Who do you know? Mm -hmm. Who do you keep mm -hmm. in your circle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, while I hit a wall, you know, there's still knowledge that transferred and, and experience is failure and a failure is experience. Absolutely. And I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. So hitting a wall when I'm 29 years old <laughs> isn't really that. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Big to me yeah. uh, because my happiness uh, is number one, I take care of my health. <clears throat> number one, be without health, 
entrepreneurship, you you just can't do it. Absolutely. You burn yourself out. Sure. So I look at my health first. I look at my family, and then I look at my future. And sometimes you gotta pivot. And when you gotta pivot. It, it's okay with not knowing. Like right now, I still don't have everything planned out. Sure. But sure. that's okay because I'm still moving forward mm -hmm. with executing the plan, still utilizing my network, and still utilizing my resources to move forward. And I'm going to move forward. And that's the most important thing that you just put one foot in front of the other and sure. you go out with a winning attitude because it starts with your mind first. And just writing things down yes. is Yes. incredibly powerful, powerful right. to go back and review and it just gives you because I do that as well and you write those things down and you go back and you look at them and you remember the mindset that you were in when right. you wrote them down yeah. and some of them are okay a little fuzzy but then others are like you know what I've, I've already thought that because mm -hmm. I wrote it mm -hmm. I wrote it and so to to have that and then have that resource of your own, your own resource that you created, right? Um, to go back to to review um, is a powerful tool, and I think we need to do that because we got to get a lot of things out of our heads. Um, I think I, I think when you agree that you know because it, it it it's a it's a great thought you know, and then all of a sudden we forget it because yeah. life happens and yeah. and and it just it goes away and. Next thing you know, you're reading about someone doing something that you may I have thought about I that thought about first. That. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So call in show. We got like about three or four minutes left. It's 312-738-1060. 7312-738-1060. This has just been um, a, a priceless show. Uh, I know that there are entrepreneurs out there and those who have not yet taken the step and those who are probably dabbling in it a little bit while they're doing the their main thing that may be yeah. bringing in you know and supporting the family is that something that you would recommend as a possible transition out of uh, uh, what what you're doing and and getting into it up oh, hold that thought we got to call it go ahead call it with your question or comment Hi, I just wanted to make a comment um, that um, this is a really great show, and just to mention that I appreciate the fact that you have two different generations talking about entrepreneurship. I think that sometimes, uh, kind of like the gentleman just said, he's very young, and you know, when he hit a roadblock at his age, um, you know, he knows that he still has a lot of time ahead of him. But sometimes people who are older might think, oh, maybe it's too late for me or sure. whatever it is. But that's not the case. I think that when you are older, there's never a time where you have to say. I don't have any more time or this is not the time right. it's no matter what age so thank you right. very much for your show thank you so much that <clears throat> that is such an excellent uh what's point that lose? you made we, we are oh what's it to lose yeah yeah i mean you you, you're, <laughs> you know you you know you, you you've got limited time and what happens between the dashes and thank you caller for making that observation uh, i guess you recognize that i'm a a little bit older than my guest. Uh, that's all right, bro. Is, is that all right? My mama says, "Keep living." <laughs> Keep living. Keep that's living. right. That's right. My producer's cracking up, but uh, <laughs> but but I, but I love it. And um, I started uh, a business, uh, a business, a business. Um, you know, a, a year ago myself that had been just chasing me down. And you know, the wife was saying, "Okay, it's either wh what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You know, make the move." And that's what I was talking about. You know, is it something that you can do while you're actually doing something that you love, but you find that there's a business that's emerging in your mind that you want to pursue? So can you do both? Can you follow both tracks and still, uh, you know, and still be efficient and, and, and follow? Absolutely. I didn't just quit my job without already having created a plan mm -hmm. and then seeing that plan manifest, having projections, and then just taking that leap of faith. And so I think that's something that needs to be carefully looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't acknowledge or expect you to just react impulsively, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. some of the final things that I want to hit on that are yeah, most please, in important, last 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, important to me are being at balance with yourself and meditating. Taking the time to meditate is super, super important to clear your thoughts. Be quiet. Be healthy. Mm -hmm. Eat healthy. And then believe. Not enough people believe in themselves. And so those three things and just executing with discipline and consistency is nothing but success in the future. 
Believe, be healthy. And one more. Believe, be healthy, be healthy and, and committed. And committed. Thank you so much, Damon. We're going to have you back. Thanks. See you at the farmer's market next week.